What's going on everybody? GMD Geek back here with hopefully a short video uh, over the last couple days. Uh, I've had a few people asking me specific questions about uh, liquid cooling and temperature controls for their computer, specifically the CPU versus the GPU um, in, in, in heat sinks and uh, liquid cooling kits and really nice liquid cooling loops and blocks and all that stuff. Uh, oddly, this all came out after I shared a picture of the PC that I just built. I'm using a Corsair H115i cooling kit on the processor. In a couple of weeks, I'm expecting a kit to get here from Corsair where I'm doing a custom water loop that's going to do both the processor as well as the uh, graphics card, which is an Asus uh, <clears throat> 2080 Ti for overclocking. Uh, so I'll be doing that, but I'll do a video on that separately. With that said, uh, I want to answer some of those basic questions that came up and uh, why that you need airflow and cooling and understand the differences on it. So let's jump on into it. So what you see in front of me is a standard case. Uh, Leon Lee makes this case. Uh, the friend that actually called me at around three o'clock in the morning the other day, which is perfectly fine. I'm not going to bring out his name. He was concerned about the temperature of his PC, more specifically a fan that was ramping up and ramping down that apparently had been ramping up about once a week and then got more consistent and now has been ramping up oh, about every 30 to 60 seconds. Um, so we were troubleshooting all of that. And then um, the conversation became, he has a liquid cooler on his processor. Uh, it's an H60 from Corsair. It's a single small radiator with a single fan on it. Uh, should he stay with that? Should he go with something else? And then ironically, the next day, uh, we had more uh, conversation between several people about the H60 versus the H100i and the H115i from Corsair or a Kraken from NZXT, X, NZXT? Uh, I never get it right, from NZXT, yes, um, which I've never used, so I couldn't really speak to it, but they have a really good review and good reputation amongst the builders. But um, specifically, what we want to talk about first is airflow. Um, each case is going to be different, so you need to look your case up to make sure you understand how the airflow works from general tips and my preferences would be um, mesh front, not a glass panel. This allows air to be drawn in easily and more efficiently. Uh, glass got really popular um, with all the RBG and all the lighting, like in this picture or the one where you're going to see a picture of mine. Um, it just depends on your preference. Some people don't care. Some people do. Uh, the cool thing is I, you know, I do, we'll be talking a lot about Corsair in this video. I'm not sponsored by them. It's just a preference. They're easy to get prices readily, uh, pretty decent and they're readily available and they have really great support. So I do that. But the cool thing is you hit a little switch on or a little button on the keyboard and you turn off all the lights if you don't want it to light up your room. But in this case, you see, there's a lot of fans. There's three on the top, three on the bottom, three on the radiator that's cooling it and you don't see the two, the three that are actually on the GeForce RTX card. So that's three, six, nine, actually 12 cards in that box. So anyone that tells you that you only need one or two fans to cool a system and help move the air around properly, if you do not have a full on liquid cooling system, and even then needs to be sent to a professional for some counseling. All right, <clears throat> so what happens is if you, you need to bring cool air in, you need to make sure that the air direction is make cooling off the radiator for your uh, water cooling unit, which we're going to go over here in a minute. Um, from this point forward, we're going to call the radiator a rad. Okay, fans mount to that. Water comes off the processor or coolant, depending on the make that you have, goes into the radiator, gets cooled. The fans cool the fins that are on the radiator, and that cools the liquid, just like a car radiator. Okay. Um, Corsair, Kraken from NZXT, all those, they make various mounts for the different processes with the i9, i7, the, the Ryzen, whatever else you, you need, they make it. It's just really dependent. Now, a couple little tips uh, as we're talking about airflow. So again, you need to make sure you have an air intake and an air outtake so the, 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 the air goes through. Just a general rule. We're not going to get into the science behind it. There are good cases and bad cases. Uh, also, Underneath, you see in this picture here, right here, 
it is off the ground, at least, at least a half inch. My box is about one inch off the ground uh, and on a solid surface, no carpet. This allows air to come in from underneath to take cool air in. Hot air rises, cold air drops. So I want the cold air coming in from the bottom. Just my mentality, my thinking on it, my preference. You could do it different, but that's how I run it. If you set your computer on the floor and it's a standard case and is maybe puts that this far off the floor and you have carpet, you've essentially killed off one of your primary optimal sources for air intake. And if you take it up off the floor and get it on a counter and raise it up about an inch, I, I, you're probably going to see a three to 5% drop in temperature. It's, it's weird. It's wacky. It's cool. It's thermal dynamics. It's how it works. All right. So that being said, make sure you have what you can do yourself right now to help ventilate your PC and your tower. Now let's talk about the water cooling. The conversation that I got involved with yesterday and the day before as a result of everything, which liquid cooler can I do? The friend that talk, messaged me, I think it was last night or this morning, uh, was asking about the Blizzard Copper 45. I don't know anything about it. It's a square. I think they have a square liquid cool pump. And then they, I think they might have a round chamber now. I don't know. I figure if you're going to go with the system like that, you might, unless you're going some super overclocking, um, you better go all out and make sure you're liquid cooling both the processor and the GPU. That's just my sense on it. If you're trying to figure out what I'm talking about, okay, here's the extreme. This is mineral cooling. <laughs> this is really pretty cool. And um, yeah, it's a fish tank. The PC is in there. It looks like it's water. It's actually mineral oil. It's a type of oil. And it really does a really efficient job cooling it. Keeping it clean. And keeping the acrylic or the glass from cracking, that's the biggest concern. And maintenance is a nightmare. So I'm not going to talk about that. But I thought I'd just slip it in there. But there's some really fancy liquid cooling systems out there. All right. Like this. You can see this here. Just, just tons of stuff. How people can cool their systems. How they arrange it. People want to show it off. Uh, or they really do overclock. And they want to make sure their system's cool. So here you can see they've they've liquid cooled the GPU, which is the, the, the video card. They've liquid cooled the processor, all these tubes. This is your water pump or your liquid pump. They put dye in there. I don't really care for that. It's a little messy to clean up. Uh, it just depends on your preferences. Again, you can see what they're doing here. You've got your, your water pump, your radiator or your rad. You've got liquid cooling to the processor, liquid cooling to the GPU, to GTX. This is a 1080, so they did it. it's been around for a while. You can customize these. Or you can do it on your own. And you can see this one here. This is one of the reasons I brought this one up. There's a rad on the top, a radiator there, and there's another one right here. Now, I want to also point out, do you see there's a difference on where they place the fans? So on one, you've got the fans on the inside. On the other one, you got the fans on the outside. That could be because of the case or how they want to do just to get the ease of tubes and everything else. It looks like it was a space issue and they wanted to keep that. But you can put the fans anywhere. Typically with the fan, um, let's just go to, where's that at? Here, you can see on the front where there's the the logo for the Corsair. On the front, we see where my mouse is at. Uh, let's get a better picture of a fan. Um, doo -doo, yeah, right here. You can see that um, that's, that's the side that's the air that's going to come out on. Uh, the other side with the details and the serial number and everything, that's the intake side typically. Some fans will put an arrow on them letting you know which directions it's going to go. But just be, be aware of that, all right? Now, the question is, what cooler? So he has the other friend that called me in the morning with a heating problem. His i9 processor has a um, Corsair H60 liquid cooler on it. It's water cool. I'm not a fan of it. The radiator or the rad is really small. I think it's more for a micro ATX case, living room box, or anything like that. I really wouldn't use it for a gaming system. I just don't think it puts out enough oomph to actually cool the processor for what I would be after. That being said, just a couple of quick temperature sensors for you. Um, for your newer processors like the i9, uh, the 9900K, or the Ryzen 9 series, or even the 7 series, 3700, 3900, 3950, your temperatures that you want to make sure that you're staying around ballpark figure um, is around, you know, for me, I prefer under 50 degrees Celsius. You can go between 50 and 60. Once you start getting towards 
90 degrees, start getting concerned. You get over 100 degrees Celsius, be a little concerned. Well, really concerned. Shut the box down. You've got something going on. You get hotter than that. You can have some problems, damage your system and all that stuff. So, but for my personal preference, I like keeping my box around 50 or less. Typically, and you're trying to figure out how well, how do I do that? There's a software program out there called H where uh, hardware monitor. It's from CPU ID. You can just come down here. You go to this. I'll put the link in the description below. Click on the setup, install it, and you're going to run this program right here. And you can see I have a few cores. I like I have a little bit of running. Typically, TPIN is rep, uh, representative of your CPU and the core. I run my, most of my cores are clocked at 4.3. I have one core because of the luck and the draw of the silicon. I have to actually run it uh, 3.9. Otherwise, for some reason, as soon as I kick that thing up to 4.3, that shoots from roughly 40 or, or um, 36, 37 degrees, shoots all the way up to like 70 or 80. It, it's really weird. But and then this will give you the temperature your main board is. It'll give you a temperature of your CPU overall. And I fluctuate between 46 and 51, depending. I have a games and all this other stuff running. So just just good practice. Keep your temperature of your processor between. Uh, if you have a newer ones like the i9 and the Ryzen 7s and, and, and Ryzen 9 series, try to stay under 57, 58 degrees. Um, and if you have an i7, uh, along those lines, uh, like an 8700K, you really want to keep that one under 75. Anything over 90 is a really big concern for me. GPU is a little bit different. It's your graphics card. Around 80 to 81 degrees is what they recommend. If you go over that, start getting a little concerned. Your graphic cards hit like 90. Again, start mm, questioning. Anytime anything gets over 90, you've got something going on and you need to look at it. All right. Anyways, the description again for it will be in the below with the link and you guys can go get it. It's free. Go ahead and run it. Uh, they've got a great set of uh, tutorials on it so you can understand what all the definitions mean and it monitors a whole lot of stuff. All right, I'm going to close that down. We're not going to need this one anymore. Uh, well, I'm going to leave this up for reference. So we have the, 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 the debate was, should you go with uh, which, which liquid cooler should you go with on a budget? You've got a Kraken from NZXT. This one here is showing the X52. I like the X53. I believe it's a 280. I could be wrong. I've never used them, but the price is decent. Uh, I am familiar with Corsier. My case is Corsier, and I did that because I did a custom water loop, and I'll show you guys why I did that here in a minute. Um, but the question was, is what's an 860 versus an H100i versus the 115i? Okay, let's, let's first look I don't really care about the 60. You can see right here, it is a small square. The radiator is 157 by 120 by 27. It's literally just a square. Um, little, just, just a little square radiator. Think of something that might, might even, it might cool a mini fridge, like kind of philosophy or like a little, I don't even think it'd cool like a mini Cooper or a Ferrat, something like that. Um, it's just not, a, not a big box. It's not made for, from, for my opinion, not for gaming. Okay, it's to cool some other stuff. If you have a small mic micro case, you want something better than some of the, the heat sinks out there. Okay, maybe. Not worth it in my books. I just, I just, it should never go in a gaming system. And that's what we're specifically talking about. Gaming and video streaming and all that. Kick that sucker to the curb. So, then the question comes, should I get an H100i if we're looking at Corsair or a 115 is what I was asked yesterday. Okay, there's a difference between the two. It's subtle, but it's there. The um, water pump itself the in and in, in everything that goes on the cpu is the same okay they're used they're not the asterisk ones anymore and these are these platinums are not like the old ones you have a different heat plate which is this copper plate right here for dispersing the heat and helping you pull that heat away from the processor and the fans and all the rpm so this will have a different rpm set in there um but the difference here is is the size of radiator and this is a good picture right here the one on the left is the H100i. The one on the right is the H115. Okay, you can tell a little bit of a difference. You get a little more surface area, you get a little bit more volume for your liquid, which is a great um, dissipator of heat and helps you really do a good job. And you have a different fan size. So on the H100i, you get a 120 mil fan that ramps up to, a, you can ramp it up to 2400 RPM. Smaller fan, higher RPM, not always recommended, and it's a little bit smaller radiator. 
On the H115i, you get a larger radiator and you get two 140 mil fans that ramp up to 2000 RPMs. And you're like, well, one, why isn't 2400 RPM better than 2000? Bigger fan, more airflow, a lot of it's for decibels and quiets. Now, comparing the two of them together, unless you're some, some serious overclocking, you're only looking at a difference about 1% to 2% up or down. You can Google uh, H1 ver- H100i versus the H115 uh, cooling chart, and you're going to go a whole bunch of specs on that. I'm not going to go into that one. They're relatively about the same. I was asked which one I would go with, and if you can see here, the price difference is around $30, $25, somewhere around there. Depends on the deal of the day, which color you're going with, yada, yada, yakety, schmackety. Or even, or excuse me, $10. Uh, unless you go without the color, but what's the point? Um, for me, I want a little bit bigger radiator that's going to be able to handle more heat. So if I do choose to over to, to overclock, I can have that capability. I also want that capability of the fans to move more air and then go from there in my case. And you can look at the picture that I'm going to post in the doc in the pin in the comments below. And I'll try to post in here again. I have in my case, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight fans. Uh, the front fans pull the air in the bottom fans, pull the air from the bottom out and point them onto the video card to help cool that. And then the fans on the radiator, which is mounted in the top of my case, pulls the air out and pushes it outward. Okay. Or maybe I have it the other way around. I'd have to go look. The, the reality is, and then there was uh, Jay's Two Cents on YouTube did a little thing a while back. Doesn't matter if you're blowing in or out because of room temperature, all this other stuff. Is it better to bring it in? It really doesn't make much of a difference. It's as long as you're controlling the airflow and getting that moving around. I haven't had any issues with the temperature on mine. So the question is, which one should you go with? Are you going to be overclocking? I, you know, you're just overclocking your processor. And then I would go with death with the, uh, the H 115 I, uh, just for good merit and good for, for precautions. If you're not, you're just going to hook a fan. If you want to have it on there, a 100 will probably do the job for you just fine. Well, actually it'll do the job just fine. That's, there's really not a whole lot of difference. Long run for me. I wanted the bigger rad, bigger fans in, in all that, that goes with it. Um, if you want to get fans now, again, I'm going to say, just because you have a liquid cooler on your processor again does not mean that your system is properly effi- or effectively um, cooled or has the proper airflow. Get it off the floor. Get the proper number of fans in there. Look at your case documentation. Fans are going to cost you anywhere from $100 to $200 to go get them for decent ones. If you go get the cheap ones, it's going to move air, but you're going to have a lot of loud buzzing. Well, the reason is like Corsair, they're relatively quiet. Even when they ramp up, they're pretty quiet. Okay, you can go to Corsair.com and, and get them pretty cheap. You can get NZXT ones, and there's a handful of others out there. They're all going to run about the same price. So if you click on Amazon and you come in Corsair Fan 120mm, you can see you can get a three-pack uncolored for around 60 bucks, 50 bucks. You can get the colored RBG ones, which everyone loves for anywhere, depending on what quality you want to get. $99 with, you know, with the lighting node pack, um, or, uh, I'm not sure PWM triple fan. This is the newer fan. It's different. I can't remember the differences. Go read about them. Bottom line fans. You're going to need some fans in your system. Um, I run, uh, four one twenty fans, three one twenties in the front, one one twenty in the back. And then I have one, two 140s in the bottom and two 140s in the top. It's just how it worked out for me. Um, a lot of times I would like to just standardize and just go one size of fan, but depending on the size of your case as well, you might not be able to do that. Now, you don't need to go all those many of fans. Many cases out there, they'll run a liquid cooler on the processor, two fans on the front intake or wherever the intake is supposed to be, and one fan for your outtake and be sufficiently covered. Go look at the documentation, or if you have a question about it, hit me up in the comments below, or head over to uh, our, our Discord, GMD Geek Gamer. We've got a little section uh, in there in the channel to discuss hardware troubleshooting. I'd be happy to talk about it there. Uh, I've been doing computers for over 20 years, so it's just something I picked up um, along the ways, and, and and just for me, it's it's just an everyday part of life. But for I get the confusion on it now. 
also speaking to the um to the to the way that you hook these up there's going to be some wires that come off the top you plug the fans there's um let me get it real quick let's just do this corsier h115i let's go with the platinum let's see if we can find a picture real quick so i can show you what i'm going to talk about and if you're curious when you go to their site on any of them they do have uh, a watch a video on it that gives a, the, the the overall things and they have a how to video easy to install so those that want to see how to install it it's a youtube video i'll actually post that down below it's a short one there are other videos out there you can google that will walk you through it but specifically what we're looking for is for a picture that shows all the wires coming up here we go so you can see here can we zoom in on that it comes with different mounting brackets all the processors and everything else by default right now it's coming with an intel bracket so if you have it on there on like the h60 already this will work for you you should just unscrew the old one put the new one on. it comes with paste already applied to the heat the heat sink on the bottom so you don't have to and i mean unless you're really specific about your thermal paste this is going to work just fine okay uh, you get some extreme gamers and builders and stuff that changes the match but uh, you can see right here there's this paste. It's a it's just a pre-applied pad. For me, it's always worked just fine. You can use that and be in be just fine there. What I'm talking about now is these connectors. You have the fans are mounted to the rad. Again, they're gonna pull in this in this configuration, they're pulling designed to pull the air in from the other side of the rad through the fans and out. They plug in, they have each fan has two plugs, one for power, and that's typically on the motherboard. And then the other one is to plug into an RBG controller, sometimes on the motherboard, depending on your motherboard. Or in this case, these ones will plug into the Corsair water cooler itself. This little area right here, they'll just plug in. You can show that they've got one connected already. And that I'll let you use. And then there's a cord for the this one right here, USB. It plugs into the processor or you know, the processor plugs into the motherboard. You download the software called IQ software from uh, Corsair and you can control the RBG and you can control fan speeds from the IQ uh, software. If you don't have the ability to control it from your motherboard, I do control mine from the IQ software and I send it to my phone. Okay. So that's simply how it is and what the things are. You can do with it. Personal preferences an I 100 I versus an I 115 I budget wise, $15, $20. I think it's worth getting the extra size up as long as you have the room in your case for it because I just like the extra volume of liquid. Helps me cool it better. It lets me have some bigger fans and ability to just move a little bit more air. It makes me rest easier and I can do just a little bit more with some overclocking cases. Not everyone's going to agree with that. Again, it's personal preference. So when you ask, I do not like the H600. I don't think it's adequate unless you're building a mini case that's going to sit in the living room for games or whatever else and not all that much use. It's not just not that much for me. And if I had to choose between the H100 and the H115i, I'm going with 115i. Again, this will be down in the description below. Um, and look up the cases. Make sure you got proper airflow. Get them off the floor. Now, for those that want to stick around, this is what I did for my box. I ordered a custom water loop. Uh, because it's already built for my case. Uh, Asus and Corsair make some good stuff. Uh, and Asus came up with a water block that I can pull off of there. If you want to do this, but have never done it, I don't recommend diving. I mean, you can dive in. It's a lot to learn, especially when it comes to mounting a water block or liquid cooling block on your process, your GPU. That is a bit of a, well, it's a lot of work. And it can be a little bit daunting because you have to pull the fans off. You have to pull, well, you have to pull the shroud off, the fans off, the heat sink off. You have to take the pads off, remap the pads, get everything put in there, then put on the, the cooling loop, and then you can do some other. It's it's a little bit there. However, like Micro Center has a really good staff for doing that throughout the United States. It just depends where you're at. If you still want help doing it, you can order here and then find a, lo a custom local person to help you. If you look and ask and you Google around or hit Twitter and search, there are people out there that build custom loop systems. That's going to be a lot more expensive. I went with Corsair because it's a little more um, that's warranted. My insurance will recognize them and um, I could pick parts, but it also help you do it. So you can go click on the design loop. I'll put the links below. 
my case is a Corsair 680X. It's right here. I'm going to select it. Click Next. It wants to know my motherboard. I have an Asus X570. Let's see what it comes with. Uh, E-gaming. My processor is an AMD Ryzen 950. So I, you tell it what parts you have, and it's taking this all into consideration. You click Next. I have an NVIDIA Grand Graphics card. It's ASUS 2080 Ti OC. And you can see it's going to find my ASUS uh, ROG. I have an ASUS ROG Strix GeForce RTX 2080 Ti OC. That stands for overclock, okay? I'm going to click on that. I'm going to click Next. And then it's going to see the recommended setup. All looks good and done. They use different sizes, and it's going to ask you some more questions. Are you planning? Are you, are you going to overclock your CPU? Well, I'm not doing this for nothing, so yes, I am. You can go less. It's going to give you less, slightly less, a little bit less expensive, but I'm overclocking. If you're going to do it, might as well build it right. So yeah, and then it asks me, are you overclocking your GPU? Yes, I am. I about the overclock one for a specific reason. Okay, and then I'm going to click on Next. And it tells me that my Corsair fans are suitable and custom cooling, so I'm good. That's why I bought that case that I specifically did. And if I wanted to get more fans and change them around, that's fine. These are the default ones I got. It's fine, and I can always change them out later. Here's the pump. You can go to a white one if you want. I don't care for the white one. I like to have a, I have a black case and some orange custom colors or blue. It depends on my mood. Blue and orange are my favorite colors, as you can see on the wall. Okay, so here we go. Then you can choose between 10 ml and 10 versus 12 or 10 m 12 setup or 1014. I do the 1014 and I prefer hard plastic. If they're going to do it, that's how I'll do it because somebody else is going to bend the pipes for me. Otherwise, you can do a soft pipe that you can cut and, and do yourself. It's a little more forgiving on maintenance. You can always go and choose a bunch of other stuff in there. There, here's your liquid cooling controls. This is which cools your fans, your LEDs for them, all that other stuff. Provides power, temperature, USB readings, uh, and, and it's it's all in there. You can choose fittings, what you want. This is going to tell you what how many fittings you're getting, how many pipes you're getting. You can get extras if you want replacements. I think when I ordered mine, I did one extra of every piece, just because I have kids. Stuff happens. Anyways, it's going to tell you everything that's in the kit. It's going to put you on the price it'll even give you a build guide that you can go once it finishes downloading i can click on and it's going to show you the case how the tubes go in this case this is soft tubes i'm getting hard hard tubes so it'll just be that and it'll show you where everything should go radiator on the top and you notice here radiator it looks like i'm using two short radiators so probably the 10 115i is what it looks like and then another fan, not connected, not above a radiator uh, in, in there as well. Two radiators is typically fine for what you're going to be doing. I could do a 115 or a 150 full length if I wanted, but I don't really need that. Um, anyways, that goes into it. It shows you how to build all of that. And then you can just click on Add to Cart and good to go. You can download the configuration. You can talk to people. You can show it down to Micro Center, your local center, all that. That being said, everybody... This video is getting a little bit long. If you've got questions about the water cooling or the heat you, or you disagree with me, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to talk about it. I'm always learning, but I wanted to put this out there because there's been a lot of questions in the last couple of days from four or five people specifically about how I'm cooling my box, why I would cool it that way, and what everyone else did. I did a lot of reading on it, especially when I built my new one. There's a lot of research that went into it. Again, I've been doing computers for 20-something years. And I figure if I'm going to invest in something, I want to make sure it lasts. So don't skimp. Make sure you properly cool your box. On that note, everybody have fun. Stay safe, especially with everything that's going on out there in the news and in the wild today. Stay healthy. Take care of your loved ones. Have fun gaming. Enjoy the cabin fever. And I'm out of here.